Hey all, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a short video about a carburetor clean and rebuild. And I'm sure some of you are out there, oh, yeah, I've been rebuilding these bikes for 50 years and I've done hundreds of them. I, I, you can't teach me nothing. Well, maybe that's true, but maybe you will learn something. I don't know. There's a few little small details about these carburetors that can vastly improve your life if you know what to look for them. And it also applies to some of the new reproduction carbs that are out there today too. So watch it. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you won't. I don't know. Tell me in the comments how I'm an idiot. Feel free. One thing I want to show off is that I did end up finding a pair of uh, Eakins pipes for this. They're also called zigzags. It took me about six months to find a set, but I think it's worth it. These are one and three eighths inch tubing. The one and a half inch are a lot more common and easier to find. I know Ace Classics makes those. I just didn't want to run a one and a half inch tubing on a 500. I think it looks a little out of place personally. So I'm pretty excited to find those. Another thing I wanted to show off is that when I got this bike, the, uh, the gas tank was in primer and the oil tank was in primer. I pulled out of my stash the, this old paint uh, oil tank and I've had this, uh, this uh, old painted tank kind of kicking around. It's pretty crusty, but it's kind of cool. I think it fits pretty good with the theme of this bike as a kind of a survivor. So I think it fits right in. On to the 376 monoblock carb. I've mentioned before that monoblocks are my favorite ammo carbs. You definitely don't need to replace these with concentrics. The only reason they made concentrics is they were easier to produce, cheaper to produce. Monoblocks are great carburetors and you certainly shouldn't be putting a Makuni on your bike. What is wrong with you? Shame. Anyway, back onto this. It's a little crusty. Uh, it has one of the old style plastic float needles. I've got a good selection of uh, Viton tip versions that I'm going to replace it with. Also, the screen filter is pretty gummed up. I luckily have a new one. Got a nice new gasket set. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. This is the original uh, adapter for the pancake air filter. I've got a couple other options I can use because I'm going to be making a custom air filter for this so this just lets me figure out the best way to make that happen now this would be a great opportunity to use an ultrasonic if I had one but I don't and I used up my allowance for the month so I won't be doing that I'll be doing the good old chem dip and a little bit of swirling around with some uh, carb cleaner and try to get this as clean as possible so let's see how that works Alright, after about two and a half hours in that carb dip, it came out pretty good. There's a lot of rust stain in here and I had to take some scotch Bright and some uh, brushes and really get that nice and clean, but it came out pretty clean. So two and a half hours is about the limit. I like to leave them in the carb dip because they start corroding a little bit after that. When you bring these out and you clean them off, they get a little bit chalky. So I like to wipe them down with some of this rust inhibitor. And that gives it a little bit more of a uh, nice satin sheen to it. So I noticed a few things when I opened this up. First of all, the slide has been marked three and a half on the top. That's the type of slide this is. Someone uh, engraved it right there. That's pretty neat. Also, the float bowl cover was a uh, symmetrical style, which is incorrect. If you put this on when the carb is on the bike, it's crooked. What you need is the offset style so that when it's on it's nice and straight. Uh, another thing I noticed is that the uh, gasket kit came with a fiber washer that's supposed to be used between the uh, needle, the float needle seat and the carb body. And if you use that, let me screw this in, it's always a good idea to do a little pre-assembly before you do final assembly because you kind of discover some of these things. If you put in the float needle and then the float, when the float is all the way up, 
it actually makes contact with the carb casting at the top and not fully seat the needle. So what you need to do is run it without that fiber washer in there and that brings the uh, needle seat down about a sixteenth of an inch which is just enough to make it work properly. So now when the float goes all the way up, it actually makes contact with the float needle and not the casting at the top. This is actually common on the new reproduction carbs too. Uh, the same thing happens if you run it with that fiber washer that comes with it in there, it oftentimes does not fully close the uh, float needle. Also sometimes you'll notice that the, uh, the tickler, when you put it together, it does not have enough reach to hit the, uh, the float. So some people make uh, slightly longer versions of these and put them in. I've had to modify a few myself. Uh, I've, had, I've had enough spares that they come in different sizes and I've just kind of swapped out pieces I need. But this one works good. Anyway, uh, let's do a final assembly on this carb. I'm going to use a little bit of Hylomar because we're not using any fiber washer here. So now we gotta, when the float's all the way up, the tickler can press it down and flood the bowl. I'm gonna use a little bit of Hylomar on the gasket. Keep this a little bit loose until we get our fuel lines set up. These uh, jets were pretty gummed up pretty good. They took a little bit of work. I've got some guitar needle. <laughs> I've got some guitar string and I've also got this little kind of cleaner kit that I had with my welder. It has some uh, very small little scrapers to help clean out some of the insides a little bit.
in our new uh, freshly cleaned uh, pilot jet here. It's a 25. Fiber washer, cover. Okay, the idle screw, we'll just kind of put it in there for now. We won't tighten it up too much. This hole is for the blanking plug. The washer. This hole is for the air mixture. Go all the way in and then out one and a half. One. And a half. All right. Get our needle set at the halfway spot. Of course, we don't have our cables in yet, so we'll be taking this back out. I'm going to add just the smallest amount of oil to this. Sure goes through the jet. <clears throat> there we go. Spring on with a tiny little screw. So normally the throttle cable runs through there, so we're probably gonna have to take a lot of this back off. Because it's time to run the cables. Then it's running, there used to be a choke in here, but it's been blanked off with a little blinking screw. Bring in. Over now. And that's pretty much one reconditioned uh, Amel carburetor. Ready to go on a bike. All right, the last thing to do is get the uh, intake manifold on and the carburetor on. So we're gonna start with the, uh, the gaskets for the intake manifold. I'm gonna put some Hylomar on these. Carburetor cleaner does a pretty good job of getting off the Hylomar. Okay, so there is an orientation to these gaskets. Just pay attention. Now we can put on the intake. Now the parts book says that this uses a plain washer, but my plain washer is the OD 
is just a little bit big. You can see there's a little concave area for a smaller OD washer to go in there. So I'm gonna use stock style serrated washers because they fit in there. I'm not sure if that's 100% correct. Don't really care. And we've got the nuts. Make sure you put the flat side in. Tighten these up. For the love of all that is holy, do not over tighten these nuts. Okay, once those are all tightened, we take our gasket, put it on, then we get our phenolic block. This actually keeps the carburetor cool. Doesn't the heat doesn't transfer from the engine to the carburetor as easily if this is here. And because we are using an O-ring in the uh, carb, we're not going to use another gasket here. So we simply put the new O-ring in from the kit, slide it on, two plain washers, and the nut. Again, do not over tighten these. This is how you get warped flanges. Also warps the throttle body. All right, that's it, y'all. That's uh, pretty much a motor ready to go back in a bike. All right, that engine is ready for this chassis, but this chassis is not ready for that engine. So I think the next video is gonna be all about stripping this down, doing some maintenance and getting it all ready to get that motor back in. Till next time, thanks for watching.